these are big picture, long-term factors that you do have to take into consideration and make a call on in, in one way or another. Yeah. And I'm willing to entertain the view that we are now in a different period uh, post COVID uh, that maybe was accelerated by the COVID experience itself, particularly in the US labor market. One of the big questions, at least to me right now, is whether we see a slowdown in, in in key economic variables like inflation or unemployment or employment, I should say, uh, uh, before we see something unfortunate break in financial markets. As it is, we are seeing stuff break, uh, speech marks around the break. Uh, things weren't as smooth as they could have been back home in the UK. Uh, I have friends in emerging markets. That's a lot of emerging market debt and equities are trading very cheaply. And people are, you know, people are leaving that space because they can't make a living trading assets on it. What do you think is likely to break first, the real economy or the financial markets? Well, I'm tempted to say the financial markets because the fin financial markets are a discounting mechanism, at least in equity uh, equities. And um, you mentioned the word pivot earlier. Um, the Financial markets are highly sensitive to anything that looks like a pivot in policy that that maybe um, creates a, a new day, if you will, where interest rates have topped out. So the equity markets are uh, right now, of course, highly, highly sensitive to Fed policy and any indication that there is a uh, 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 that the Fed is coming off of the series of rate increases most recently at 75 basis points each time. What, what would they be discounting? Well, they'd be discounting policy and also discounting the real economy. And um, if the breakout, if you will, or the break that you're referring to is a break to a downside scenario, let, let us say a more severe recession than would be hoped for or expected. Um, no one hopes for a recession, but a mild recession would probably help with the inflation picture. If that were the case, then they, again, the financial markets would be looking for indications that that uh, bad scenario is, is actually playing out. And again, may probably lead the real economy in its reaction. So I, on balance, I see the financial markets coming first. Um, you mentioned emerging markets. You mentioned your home country of the UK. Uh, just in the last uh, few days, I have picked up a lot of discussion and concern about financial stability mm -hmm. um, and about the, the, the risk that so, uh, so often is the case, some small thing triggers a systemic problem worldwide. Um, the situation in the UK with the reversal of policy, but the market reaction in the guilt market uh, to the unfunded tax cut, that's an example. It has not played out in the last two weeks as being necessarily a systemic event. But the underlying reality of pension funds that have over the last 15 years been reaching for yield and taking on certain kinds of risks, you know, that's going to be true in a lot of markets, the United States, the other advanced economies, and for that matter, the, the um, emerging economies. So we could have a very fragile system situation that we're dealing with. And uh, I, I, again, I just, I have to say in conversations as well as in the press, I've picked up sort of the third question, and that is financial stability. So it's interesting you mention financial stability. I, I would argue that the UK crisis we just saw was a financial stability issue and a financial stability issue caused by allowing pension funds to uh, use margined instruments to hedge liabilities where there are no margins. So they ended up finding themselves paying, making margin calls on financial swaps while the offsetting 
asset or the offsetting uh, factor were liabilities uh, that are not margined dropping in value. Um, and this is bad design. I think implicitly, you just pointed out, if the Fed's tightening rates, tightening financial conditions, we get to find out who is the weaker player in the market. Does the Fed have to tighten financial conditions still further? Uh, good question. Um, I guess it will, again, depend. I'll emphasize it depends on what we see in the inflation numbers in the coming weeks. It depends on how persistent inflation actually turns out to be. It is a challenge because the Fed really only has one or two tools. Uh, the tool of the moment, of course, is the interest rate tool. And although I'm a little bit skeptical, frankly, of thinking in metaphors and letting metaphors drive your decisions, the metaphor of steering an ocean liner is one that actually I do think uh, pertains in this set of circumstances. And that is if inflation continues to be a problem, it doesn't seem to decelerate and therefore is persistent, then the temptation to oversteer with monetary policy is very clearly there. The Fed has taken responsibility for an inflation that has multiple causes, some of which are supply side, some of which are not monetary in nature, and yet the Fed has taken responsibility and its tools cannot address every underlying cause of our inflation problem. So they will perhaps, there's a risk that the Fed does too much in response to, to bad inflation numbers. And then uh, we end up with uh, recessionary conditions that are worse than had to be. Your last answer made me think immediately. The, word, the phrase fiscal policy jumped into my head. Because it seems to me that a lot of the reasons why we're here is because fiscal policy may have been set too loose in the past. It may not be. It's an arguable point. Do you? What are your thoughts on where fiscal policy is likely to take us over the next two years? Hmm. Well, I mean, if you ask, you know, basic questions, are we going to go from in the United States from deficit to surplus? I'd put my money on deficit. I don't think. I see the political will to address the, enough, address the spending to reduce the deficit. Does that, and that means sort of naturally the the debt level grows, and the debt level is at a it's at a manageable but very concerning level today. Um, Thirty one trillion was the last number that came out in terms of the national debt. You have to look at the debt more as a question of the debt held by the public because the government itself owns its own debt in significant ways, the Fed being the, the biggest holder. That number of debt held by the public is about $24 trillion. That's about 100% of the size of the economy. Uh, this is not a comfortable position to be in. It's not, it's not tragic yet, or it's not... Uh, a catastrophe yet, but it, it's not a good position. And I don't see that deficit spending is going to be curtailed, quite frankly. So we have so much partisanship in, in the political system that I just doubt that Congress is going to come to grips with everything that would have to be done to bring that under control. So to a degree, the fiscal side will continue to be excessively supportive of, of inflation, if you will, because that's really that correlates with, with the fiscal stimulus that comes out of deficit spending. And uh, I think the, the, the central banks or the, or the Fed in this case is simply going to have to navigate a world in which they're not getting all the help that they could use from the fiscal side. It sounds to me as if they're being set up for failure. I mean, the choices they have are to tighten policy to a point which breaks financial markets to create uh, the sort of tightness in financial conditions to offset 
very easy fiscal conditions. And that problem isn't going to go away in a, in a two-year time frame. And I, I agree with you. I, I don't see any evidence of a the political appetite for austerity here in the United States. If anything, it's almost suicidal politically. There's no party that can can set up a, 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 an austerity policy and hope to win elections. So if you have that set up, it's very difficult to really be optimistic that we're going to the, the inflation problem, if it was domestically driven, would get addressed. We hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.